Hello, you've reached a very basic Bible hotline at 1 800 uh, B B B V B B B. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ezra 4. I'm going to start reading this. No, I'll we'll find a word or something to uh, look at. Okay. When the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard that the exile, <laughs> the exiles, we're building a temple for the Lord, the God of Israel. They approached Zerubbabel in the heads of the families. Zerubbabel, the heads of the families. Okay. Of the Lord God of Israel. <laughs> uh, Judah and Benjamin. Yeah. Okay. The enemies approached them. Let us build with you because like you, we seek your God. Yeah, right. Uh, they're your enemies and have brought, been sacrificing to him since the time of King Esarhaddon of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel, Jeshua, and the other heads of the families of Israel replied, You have no part with us in building a house for our God, since we alone must build it for the Lord, the God of Israel, as Cyrus, king of Persia, then has commanded us. Then the people of the land, the people of the land, set out to discourage the people of Judah. Okay, when the enemies of Judah and Benjamin heard, they were told no, so then the people of the land, the enemies, okay, set out to dis the enemies then set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to build. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their plans throughout the reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, and down to the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Man, you want to keep reading? I think that's good. Let's go in. Pick us a word. House. Chelsea. What's a house? It's a thing with four walls that you live in. Chelsea. House. All right. 1,925. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come with all your household into the ship. Okay, so that's Noah's Ark. Yahweh said to Noah. All right. Now, Yahweh said to Abram, leave your country and your relatives in your father's house. So you're going to leave your country, the, the, the land that you're living in, the physical geography. You're going to leave your relatives, your family, your physical family, and your father's house. Is four walls with a roof. Let's see, Ezra, you have no part with us in building a house for God. Okay, they're right here. The exiles were building a temple for the Lord. The enemies, let us build with you. Um, you have no part in building a house. Okay. I'm going to guess, though. Abram's family didn't live in a temple, your father's house. A hut, four walls with a, a roof, a hut. Uh, they might have had four walls. They might not have had a roof. Sometimes, they, uh, to our knowledge, they had like flat roofs and stuff, you know. All right. The princess of Pharaoh saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh got a house, probably got a palace. Pharaoh was the king of everything in Egypt. Probably got a palace rather than a house. Okay, 1215. Okay, we're going to read in context, just so you see. He dealt with Abram well for her sake. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, we missed verse. Let's go back. Okay. I'm going to go 1215 in context. Right here. Click it. 14, 15, 16. I wish I could get verse 17 also. Well, we'll get it. When Abram had come into Egypt, Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. His wife, Sarah. Sir. Yeah. The princes of Pharaoh saw her, praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Mm -mm. Woman took her. Pharaoh 
dealt well with Abram for her sake. He had sheep, cattle, male donkeys, male servants, and camels. Now, 12, 14 through 16. All right. Yahweh afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Sarai. Yeah. Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did he tell me that she was your wife? Look it back up here. Please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with you for my sake, and that my soul may live because of you. Abram's like, hey, Sarah, you need a, Sarai, you need a lie from me. See now, I know you're a beautiful woman to look at. It will happen that when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. They will kill me, but they will save you alive. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well for me for your sake, and that your my soul may live because of you. Abram came to the land of Egyptians. The Egyptians saw she was beautiful. They were like, hey, come to our house. But there's the important part. Taken into Pharaoh's house. And then verse 17. Yahweh afflicted Pharaoh in his house. With great plagues. because of So wait. He afflicted Pharaoh. And the, the building structure. The dwelling place. With uh, great plagues. Great plagues. His house, like I guess maybe like like uh what hell storms like hit the house, maybe, um. Uh uh uh, uh fire rain down on the house. Maybe there are crickets inside of the house. Now remember, Pharaoh, Pharaoh probably didn't just live in a house. Probably lived in the palace. Could have been a temple, right? Maybe that was it. I think something else is going on here with the word house actually, and we'll see in a minute. Some of y'all are like, no, BJ, we know exactly what it is. I'll show you. All right. Um, born in my house. Born in your house. Born in his house. Every male among the men of Abram's house. All the men of his house. Those born in his house. He had a lot of men born in his house. Look at this up here. Every male throughout your generations. He who was born in the house. Or bought with money from any foreigner who's so you're gonna he who is eight days old shall be circumcised. Everyone born in Abram's house can be circumcised. Okay. There are all the generations. Let me see. Look at look at this one. He led out his 318 trained men born in his house. There were 318 trained men born in Abram's house. What did Abram have a bunch of no Abram had no kids? Abram didn't have any kids. How does he get people? Wait, wait, wait. His relative was taken captive. Abram let out his 300 born in his relative's house, maybe? Maybe his relative had kids. 318 men in one house. Abram hadn't had no kids yet. Who was born in the house. Every male throughout your generations. Okay. Abram's going to have a generation. And then he dies. But there's still going to be people born in that house, that the temple. Abram doesn't live in a temple, probably. In Genesis, there was no temple yet. This word house might be being used a little differently. Born in the house, every male among Abraham and circumcised, okay. Born in the house, this household, household. See, now, my Lord, please come into your servant's house. No, they said no. But we will stay in the street all night. Okay, so in the street versus in the house. So this one is actually a physical structure, probably. He urged them greatly. They came in with him, entered his house. He made them a feast. Okay. All right. The men of Sodom surrounded the house, both young and old people from every quarter. All right. All right. Brought Lot into the house to them and shut the door. Okay. So we shut the door to the house. So this one's a real house. This is Genesis 19.2. 19.3, 19.4. You skip down to 19.10. That's all the same story. They struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness of the door of the house. Okay. Cause me to wander from my father's house. In context, let's see. Besides, she is indeed my sister. Oh, no. Abram does it again. The daughter of my father. 
not the daughter of my mother. She became my wife. So I married my dad's daughter, but not my mother's daughter. That's strange. So my dad had a daughter with another lady. Okay, we're not going to worry about that. When God caused me to wander from my father's house. Ah, remember, God was like, hey, Abram, leave. Oh, let's read the full chapter. Now, Abraham, his name changed, right? Look at this. Uh, Abraham traveled from there in the south, lived in Kadesh. He lived with foreigners. Abraham said to his wife, Abraham said about Sarah, her name's changed. She is my sister. He did it again. Abimelech, king of Gerasim, took Abraham, took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night and said to Abimelech, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not come near her. He said, Lord, will you even kill a righteous nation? Didn't he tell me she is my sister? She, even if she herself said, he is my brother. I have done this in the integrity of my heart and in the innocence of my hands. God said to him in the dream, what's God say to Abimelech? Abimelech, no, God, I didn't. Yes, I know that in the integrity of your heart, you have done this. I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not allow you to touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet. He will pray for you, and you will live. If you don't restore her, know for sure that you will die, you and all who are yours. Whoa. Now, where's house? Let's keep reading. I've been like Rose in the morning, called his servants, told all these things in their ear. All these things in their ear. Okay. I told them all. Okay. The men were very scared. God's going to kill us. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought deeds. You did one deed, but okay. De it was bad deed, though. God wants to kill him for it. Abimelech said to Abraham, See what you have done? What did, what did you see that you have done this thing? Why did you do this thing? Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place. Oh, but it is now. They will kill me for my wife's sake. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. When God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, this is your kindness, which you shall show me everywhere that we go. Say of me, he is my brother. Come on, Abram. Abimelech took sheep and cattle, male servants, female servants, gave them to Abraham. Man, that's what king of Egypt did. Pharaoh was like, here, have these cows and stuff. Now Abimelech's like, here, cows, sheep and stuff. Restored Sarah, his wife, to him. Abimelech said, behold, my land is for, before you. Dwell with it where you please. Um, where's house? I don't control F. House. <sighs> okay. By the way, is that it? Oh, okay. Here it is. One second. Abram prayed. Abraham prayed. So God healed Abimelech. His what? So Abimelech was struck with a plague. Was 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 ill. So God healed Abimelech. Abimelech's wife. I'm guessing that's Abimelech. His female servants. And they bore children. So God healed them and they bore children. Does that mean the illness caused them from not being able to bear children? The illness, they weren't able to bear children because of the illness. Or he healed them and he gave them children. So he blessed them as well. Could be either one. For Oh, no, please. For Yahweh had closed up tight all the wombs of the house of Abimelech. Because Sarah, Abraham's wife. Okay. The wombs of the house of Abimelech. If this is a house that's a temple where you sacrifice him, or it's a house with a, hey, come to my house off the street. Remember that story from Genesis, come to the house off my street. So they, no, we'll stay in the street. But they did go in the house. They were pulled into the house, someone shut the door of the house. So it's an actual structure you live in. A temple, you sacrifice stuff to God in. Um, a house that you live in with a door. This house had wombs. Yahweh had closed up tight all the wombs of the house. 
Does a temple have wounds? Does does a house with a door, you know, there's, you're on the street, then you go through the door into a house. Does it have wounds? Like, no, no, women have wounds. Um, it talked about in Genesis, Abraham, Abram, all the men born of his house, 300 and something. Okay, maybe that's why. That structure had wounds, and it was able to bear children. Abram's house had wombs and, bear, and bore 380 children. That's ridiculous. You can see <laughs> the word house is being used a little differently here. You can see it's being used in more than one way. All the people of Abram's house, not necessarily a structure. Close up tight all the wombs of the house of Abimelech, not necessarily a structure. I'm going to type this in real quick. David's house. Let's see what we find. Saul sent messenger to David's house to watch him. Okay, so that is a structure, right? You send Saul sends David messengers to David's house to watch him to kill him in the morning. I'm guessing that is the structure because I think it says David like left another way. But look at this one. Jonathan made a covenant with David's house. He went up to David's, the place where David lives in. Oh, building which David lives in. Let's make a covenant. Yahweh will require. Second Samuel 31. Now there was long war between Saul's house and David's house. So two structures are fight. No, they don't have wounds. They're not fighting. And in fact, this is after, I believe, David passes away. Let's go see. No, no, let's not go see. You can, it's, a, it's a Bible study topic. We're getting, it's getting pretty long. You can tell the word house is being used now in different ways. Words in the Bible are used in different ways. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, we'll go ahead and call some quits. And if you're like, well, no, BJ, I want to know more about house. Okay, go study. <laughs> we'll see you out in the next Very Basic Bible.